today I'll just give you a little bit brief about Autodesk. Everybody knows Autodesk and uh, AutoCAD is synonymous with the uh, drawings industry, I would say. Uh, we launched AutoCAD in 1982 and that actually moved your pen based drafting into computer based stuff. Right? So uh, today I just, the topic of discussion is enabling design and make in a connected environment. Right? So we are moving beyond. So uh, Autodesk, beyond AutoCAD, we have many industries that we serve. Uh, mainly it's that we, we were focused in design tool. We have design tool for almost every industry that you can think of, right? Whether it is manufacturing, architecture, engineering, construction, infrastructure, media and in, uh, movies, right? Or television that you see, almost everything, the backbone is provided by our technology. Um, so some of the things that our customers are trying to do worldwide is increase revenue, reduce cost, as well as minimize risk and compliance in whatever they are doing, from design to construction, design to make, design to production, right? And um, work is collaborative, yet the industry today is very fragmented, right? Everybody is working in silos, right, from design, plan, make and operate. This is basically the uh, workflow in any uh, anything that you make. So in manufacturing, you see how the workflow is quite fragmented. We are sending information all across the place without having a single view of truth. And same is with AEC segment, whether it's your designing building or infrastructure project. A lot of people come together to deliver these projects, and uh, most of the problems that we see is because of lack of collaboration and information that's not with people at the right time. And because of this fragmented nature, some of the uh, issues that we see is 35% wastage, 36.4 uh, billion annual revenue loss because of the rework that we often, almost every day we have to do. 95.5 industry annual rework cost because of arbitration. Imagine a project that tomorrow uh, super tech building will be brought down. <laughs> Just imagine the fact that what kind of money and investment and people, uh, people have been waiting for donkey's ears to get those buildings, right? So what is your new possible? So what we look at is a connected process through, so that everybody looks at a single source of truth, right? And you actually almost embark on a paperless uh, collaborative process. You send some information, you can open any file. Um, our platform, uh, our cloud platform can open 140 formats without native application installed on your machine. So you could be on your mobile phone, iPads or other devices, laptops, and you can open AutoCAD file or other 3D file, PDFs, Excel and all, and you can doodle on top of it. You can't change the original file, right? But you can doodle on, a, on top of it and you can send it to your designers or other people in your ecosystem and track the changes that happen. And all those information will remain on the cloud to give you access uh, in number of years. If you are sus subscribed to it, even after 10 years for an arbitration, you can look back and see who made those decisions, why was that decision made and stuff like that, right? And it helps you. A lot of time, what I've heard on the statistics says, the drawings and paper in your office take up 14% of real estate space in your office. Imagine what that amounts to a cost. So if you can remove all those papers, drawings from your office, 14% could mean a lot of money for you. So three pillar of uh, thought. I think COVID drove us to digitalization much faster than we thought. So three pillars that we look at. Digitize, integrate all the processes together, and of course optimization. So with technology, when you come in to use technology, what you're doing is optimizing everything, the design process, the make process, and operation, thereby actually driving sustainability in your organization, right? Material today that goes into production of anything that you're making is scarce, right? Look at buildings, the material 
uh, it's a scarce material. So whatever we have today, if we are able to build a little bit more, that's what we need to do, right? So optimization of any design process so that that money can be used for other means and purposes would be something that we, I think, technology can bring, and our company is in forefront of that, right? And even our offices today, 100% of our offices are LEED certified platinum uh, mm -hmm. offices, and uh, in our office, whatever we use are sustainable uh, material, even our pantries and all of that kind of thing, so we use, we are um, in that journey of sustainability. Yes. So with that, I would like to stop here and uh, would like to have an engaging discussion as to where you are, how we can actually partner with you, what are the challenges that you face. I know you are in various uh, uh, industries, but as you saw, we could play a role in many of your uh, uh, companies that uh, you represent. So with that, I'm going to open the floor and we can have a discussion. Thank you. It's not a global thing, that's an Indian The global figures are much more higher. Yeah. So uh, that gives you the magnitude of things that we may not be knowing and annoyingly contributing to that. Okay. So uh, that, that's the reason why we partner with companies. Okay. So we are not a sales entity. Right? So we don't go and give you quotations and take orders. So often. So you might be asking what are so many people in our industry. Okay, so our job is to connect with you and understand where we can work together, what, where are the gaps, what can be optimized with the existing resources, and then if required, plug in the gaps with some additional uh, tools and solutions. And for all of this, solutions are there in the market in the whole industry. The immediate thing everyone does is jump to solution. Okay, but I'm, what we are saying is, let's start with the strategy. Okay. So if you have the right strategy in place, then the solution is uh, easy to take a decision. And then, of course, things like involving all the stakeholders, including people who are going to execute those things, very important. Because if we don't have the buy-in, then uh, the whole exercise might go for a toss or be delayed. Or you may have unwilling people in the organization who might not execute what you plan. Recently, we actually partnered with uh, Airbus industry. Uh, and you know, in the plane, you have the partitions. So those partitions are uh, very heavy partitions. And uh, we use our generative design. Uh, we have some uh, te uh, technology called generative design, which a machine gives you uh, any number of possibilities of design on your giving some values. What is that you want to achieve? What is the outcome that you require? And it reduced about 28% uh, uh, in weight of the flight itself, and that made the flight more you know, greener and all of that. So the same thing uh, we are doing with many industries that four cars. We were able to reduce number of. Uh, Elements for the, uh, your suspension. The, I think how many pieces were there? That yeah. was actually made into one single element, right? Thereby reducing the number of SKUs that need to be shipped to uh, the factory or fitted so the, and all of that. The focus here is okay. Design has been there for many years, right? So everybody knows how to design, but with the uh, the advent of new technologies like artificial intelligence and machines. So what's the new that just alluded to is one of those examples where we have been uh, uh, in the forefront having those kind of incorporating those technologies in design. So which means that the designer focuses on his core competency and not spends time on the tool itself. Okay, so he's not paid to use the tool, he's paid for what he's competing. Okay. So you so provide the boundary conditions provide the manufacturing process that it has to go through and get many very uh, many options before you and then choose based on the uh, the criteria that you have and arrive at a better decision. So even on the design front, so we are adopting all these new technologies like AI and 
by building it into a business. And this generative design is just to the manufacturing design. The same thing we do, extend it to the buildings. Like how do you lay out if you're doing a smart city, right? How can we, what can be the optimum layout so that you get ample amount of sunlight and so on and so forth. Okay, so that the energy consumption is reduced. So, this, so we've been doing this for many years now and that's what we are advising uh, to uh, companies who are looking to uh, optimize. So everybody is looking to optimize everything. Uh, every time, right? So there's always scope for improvement. So what could that be? That is where we partner with uh, companies like you to And that is the job we have. So initially, uh, I think when we launched Sorocad, it was lying arc in symptoms. So drawings are made. Even today, when you look at, you can go and buy a property or something, you see the plan, elevation, and stuff like that. All. So there's no other information, just a line. Right? The black color, red color, or yellow color, stuff like that. Uh, we actually moved into data approach later, and uh, now you actually design a mm -hmm. building in 3D. And you have information about the wall, whether it's a brick wall or a concrete wall or a, what kind of finish and um, and all those kind of things. And it gives you very near accurate quantities when you are going into construction, right? Look and feel and all of those kind of things. Uh, but not only that, because of that, you are able to, let's say, you have a 100-story building, your, your window sizes, if you reduce 10 centimeters uh, from a size so that you can optimize it, it can reduce the cost by, you know, millions of dollars. And same thing actually uh, does happen in anything that you design. But what interesting thing happened is analysis, which we do for optimization of the design, ਕੋਈ <laughs> 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 I'm just telling you that you have millions of in the record, and millions of data for our manufacturing plants, piping, this, that. Now we're trying to create 3D modeling. We're creating actually an EIM, okay. an asset information model, digital okay. print, digital, whatever people want. Okay. I mean, our team may be asked and then say, out of care, we have to integrate that into our data model. What do you do? I don't know what you do. <laughs> so, I am not sure that I am not sure that I that I am not sure 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 I'll tell you exactly. So, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, America mein GSA, General Services Administration, an organization that basically manages all the state government buildings, right? Whether it is courthouse, police, or anything. So, they have 1700 buildings across America which didn't have any drawings, old buildings, but they wanted to make sure. And they were leaking uh, energy. Uh, the expenditure of cost of energy was very high because they are not sustainable building. So what we did was, we actually went there and we built a product called, from scan to build. Building information modeling is a 3D kind of a... So we can actually do scan. Uh, multiple companies actually provide this. Scan is a Laser scanning. Jo tar, so either like Faro and all that. So wo hum abhi, we can go and scan your buildings, all the old factories, your name it, all the buildings and we can bring it into our platform and and we can host it on the cloud. So sitting in Mumbai, you can go and check, let's say a factory in... Uh, Maybe only. For example, we have to look at an integrated plan. People want to find out where are corrosion loops. So they need to know because if you come to Jamnagar, you will find like millions of piping on it. Uh, 
people need to understand how they can see this in 3D. They will have to be 2D diagrams and all these things for ages. Right. But uh, today, if they have to visualize them, they have to go and they have to convert this into probably a 3D modeling and then try to use it. Also, coupled with all kinds of data points because it is not about just converting it. You also need to know how old, what material, like you said. Right. So, there is a lot of work which is required. So, asset information management or modeling includes not only just basic drawing but a lot of other associated data points including material, including uh, its complexity, all that information coupled with what kind of uh, inform uh, what kind of uh, things it is carrying so that also impacts to say kind of things. So there is, I mean the teams are trying to, and why we want to do it because we want to optimize crows and we want to get an integrated plan. So obviously it is to reduce cost, optimize efficiency, all those kind of things. So there we need to understand that what is that you guys can do for getting this entire asset information model. So it, we have the technology, we said, uh, one is the technology. We have also people who can help to support your team to do this. So one, as I said, you can scan the factories for 3D. You can convert that to 3D model. There are teams who are doing that. Then you have IoT devices that can bring in this information. So, uh, uh, like JSW uh, factory in uh, Vijayanagar Hampi. So that is being converted into a 3D model uh, so that they can manage the, it's a very old plant, 30, 40 years back and all the equipment, I think Siemens equipment, they're not even able to maintain it because spare parts are not available and all those kind of so This whole scan, uh, we did entire, the scanning is going on and you are, we are going to bring it in there. And then IoT devices in the factory can be connected to a forged technology. We have or forge technology and bring it into this digital model. So you are in a central, as a model, you can see what is happening in that area to 1400 uh, degree temperature, the, uh, I mean, the safety issues and all of that can be uh, taken care of by just looking at the model, the 3D model. So that's actually a real, a real digital tool. It's that's not only the model, but it's also you know depicting the information from the various devices. And what Sunil shared is, you know, on the ground field. And if it's a greenfield project, then you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Mm. And on greenfield also, let's say today, if you are taking a baseline, and as you progress down the line for next 10 15 years, all the change management you are doing, all the equipment related information which you may like to keep, you know, like the drawings, the you know, assembly, disassembly files, all that can you manage in the system. And also a good integration can be built up with the ERP system, wherever, you know, whenever the maintenance is coming. All the asset related information can be provided from the system. And even, you know, 3D is one. One is 3D on the, on the plant side. Another is 3D on the equipment side also. You know, if you have that uh, in your contracts or anything, we can get some information, at least the assets which are coming now, going forward. Then, you know, that kind of a help can be provided. And all this is, you know, we also extend extended reality into this. So not only, you know, once we have created that, we have an iPad or goggles, we can see, you know, how the things are, or, you know, refer to the baseline with the same that, you know, what was earlier and what was now. So all those kind of, you know, inputs can be brought in, uh, which will help to, you know, uh, improve the work which team is doing. In the so this, uh, if I can add to that, uh, the, uh, this is a new way of doing this. The, the old way is we look at the 2D drawings and check, uh, Think that the, the other way is convert everything into three D, which is going to be a very laborious process and very uh, uh, unproductive. Okay. So the scan to bring workflow is where we can start, uh, so that your teams need not con convert each and every drawing into three D, unless and until they have some three D. I think the game is going to be a smaller area. Yes, sir. But I have planned for it, sir. So we are talking about uh, the, the project being done for the whole shipyard. Airport matter. So, uh, Dubai Terminal One is being redesigned, which will be one of the largest airports. So, it's got a lot of and it's an Indian company is doing it. So, uh, they are uh, actually incorporating each and every information into the model, and that will be used for redesign as well as the maintenance of that. And uh, like big uh, Maximo, IBM's Maximo. So, from BIM model, you can click a button, IBM Maximo. No, I understand. Practically, 
for, for an area which I am talking about. Both from cost, time, and everything, it will be actually not possible. So, we can give you an example now. Starbucks. Chota to amni karte. Probably not Jamala. Jamala refinery is from Nariman Point to Chengdu. Right, right. Usko karte Jamala to boss. You don't have to do everything into a real... Uh, no, I know that, but see, if we want to get an amount of work and the pipeline that is there throughout the time, for them, throughout the factory, in human government, maximum is it's a connected plant, it's a fully integrated plant. You can't give only one view or everything, it has to be a whole integrated. Only then you get those benefits. The smaller things we have also done, we stand to be in the government, but on a smaller section it is good. It takes a lot of time. Yeah, then uh, instead of trying to do it as one big scan, then you break it into smaller portions. It has to be. It has to be, yeah, it has to be that way. Okay. But then the, it's not only the scan to be. But there's a lot of other things which you have to put in. Yes. So, so, I mean, I don't know whether you have that integrated platform or you are only solving no, no, we have one part of the problem. No, no, we have everything else we have to do it. No, no, no. <laughs> we have integrated platform. It's called Tandem. 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 Where it's hosted platform. You can see so Starbucks. They now have remodeled all the stores uh, into BIM. And uh, at a click of a button, anywhere in the world. And Tandem, kya hai? what does Tandem is a 3D viewer where you can see everything in 3D. It's a I'm like, whole world you can see in a single model. So now Starbucks can, uh, the uh, team can actually sit, look at a store in, let's say, New Delhi and uh, click on it and it will give you the information as to. Uh, what is the uh, area, how many employees, how many chairs, what kind of output, rental agreements and you can also click down and see the store in 3D. Mm. Right? Mm. So uh, along with 3D, mm. it also captures the metadata and the sensor information. Mm. Yeah. All that is actually on live, so you can sit and do that. And they are churning out new stores today because the libraries are all done. So they have the chair, table and all of those are repeatedly used. They have the content of the coffee. So they make the store in two hours time. They bring out all the drawings in two hours and it's ready to be constructed. Right. So they have, they have the platform. We also did for Telstra in Australia. Is anybody using Tandem here? So uh, right now, no. It is actually, we have <laughs> in India, no. Nobody is. Maybe Biomart to but no. it's actually, uh, they are only using the airport. Uh, Bangalore International Airport is completely on uh, a digital twin, 3D, but that's only one product. I thought, not on a, so we we, we were talking to Shopperstop. <coughs> we even tried to talk to Reliance Retail to put all the stores on, on, the on uh, India map, you know. So that is, uh, we did some work, but nothing has progressed yet. No, you should come and talk. Yes. Yeah. But, BIM is in our construction cloud, right? Yeah, so that's we have different cloud. So one is Autodesk Cloud, which is about common data platform where you share the drawings, share all the information across the ecosystem. Construction cloud is for construction, pre-construction, construction, quantities and all of that. So we had a couple of discussions for BIM, but later I think converted it to the construction cloud. So the discussion now started around construction. Cloud. Yeah, so you host it, I mean you you have a BIM model. You host it on construction cloud, you can open it without actually having a Revit uh, installed on your machine. And everybody across the world can see the same model and uh, have a discussion. You can doodle on it, you can put your comments and then send it across to whoever you want. You know, all those kind of things. And uh, even uh, clash detection is all online. So you can do a run, run a clash detection and you can, your designer is sitting in London, your structural engineer is in some other country. You could run a clash and find a solution, and you can finish the meeting all night. So more to more importantly, it. you saw that graph, like all the way up to insights. <coughs> you have insights from the data. That, that that's what three D models are built for. Today. Yeah. So that's how like so all the now it's all in one single platform. Earlier everything was different, right? The drawings were separate, the cost was separate. Uh, anytime you make a change somewhere, the entire database has to be changed. Somebody has to go and update. But now, with all this, your when I change a drawing, you can 
very well understand the cost will also update automatically. But this base is a DMS, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It's, it's a data management platform, which Document is management. Yeah, Autodesk Cloud. Cloud. Then on top of it, you know, what, yes. is the, what is the difference between this and the Siemens NX? No, uh, see, NX is a, me a mechanical CAD software, yes, the design software. Oh, this is uh, this, is it? this is just one part that, that, yeah. that will sit there. Yeah. The NX don't have that problem. DMS. Complete. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so also take care of the project management piece because when you're saying data, costs, etc., that's also a lot driven by a project within the. So project management piece. Actually, we work with Primavera <coughs> project. Yeah, okay. That's what seamlessly I integrated because we can't do a good job. I saw today. Your presentation, you built everything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we, we think that okay, we will rather work with. Uh, so you kind of integrate it. It's a backward, bi directional integration. You make a change in the schedule, it will get the uh, model will get updated. So you move a schedule of column casting to two weeks later, it will actually change your model also. So that so, you don't uh, need to go and again work on. Please, Sunil, uh, the platform that we have is uh, it's an open platform which you think can integrate with the system that you have. Yeah. So that is how you cannot throw everything over right and try and get started. From yeah, I'll tell you one thing, you know, going to this construction cloud, yeah, with the facility you have, there is sort of any native drawing tool. Those drawings can be open here. It has that facility, facility to you know, get those all extensions, whether you have done in NX or you have done in other this thing, Tecla and all those things. 140 so formats you can open without that. Without so one platform, yeah. you can have a kind of uh, workflows where you have multiple design teams, you know, who can then check and then validate it and come back to the original this thing. So I, after I have done the drawing, I can send it to you, you approve, then it goes to the next person, so like that. So is it then, something similar to Aconex? So yeah, yeah, it's uh, a, so Econex is only for construction. We yes. start right from design phase okay. to operation. Right? It's all one single uh, cost. Uh, even the cost draw, is draw, drawing and the work, right? Yes, work has work. Yes, yes. It has but, but how about this cost part? So you have to input all the cost? No, 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 no. We have a product called Assemble. A click of a button, if you have bought in Assemble, it is 3D. You have done BIM model, so cost will come automatically. You just have to uh, click a button, it comes over. If it's 2D drawings, then you have to do some little bit of work. It's not automatic. Obviously, length of the line is there, but height is not there. So those kind of things will have to be. <coughs> Even that the schedule of cost comes from there, you'll have to create it. Yeah. Schedule of cost will. Uh, you have to do your master data. data. Unit price yeah. and uh, uh, master data, whatever the, the cost. Schedule is primavera. That is how the work will progress when you are actually implementing that. that and that gets backward in, integrated into the models. So you can do a then uh, uh, see the model uh, in in 4D. It will show you how it is built because you are backward integrated. So it supports 3D also everything. Yeah. Yeah. It is 3D. It's like 2D also oh. supported. Or does it also support uh, the variable data to come flow into that to give a digital view kind of uh, view? Is yeah. it possible to this? So if it's a BIM model, you get a digital model. So digital twin is 3D model plus data IoT device. IoT device. Yeah. 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 So 3D models are built to get insights out of it on a regular basis, on a real time basis. This is this product? I, I so the products are many, sir. We are just talking it's about the platform. This is a platform, right? So, uh, yeah. uh, we did the water distribution project. LNT did the water distribution, the first uh, project at Mr. Modi. It was in Aurangabad. So it's a pressure pipe system, and it's all uh, based on the sensor, data, sensor information. The model is already there with LNT. Anytime there is a break, any uh, wall is uh, damaged or something, you will see it in the model, in the central room, right? So, water theft can be removed, water uh, leakages, wherever you can fix it immediately. So, it's sourced to consumer. That's the uh, model of pressure pipe system.
even uh, 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 the piping, uh, different by different liquids and all, you can actually, if you have the sensor data, it will you'll see it in the 3D model of that particular pipe, what is the flow and all those things. And what kind of simulations can you run out of? So we have multiple <coughs> simulations, right, from <coughs> in the building space, whether it is sustainability, energy, what is the consumption, what is the requirement itself right from beginning, how much cooling, heating load is required, what is the uh, material optimization, whether steel, uh, ducting, uh, all kind of material you can optimize according to the uh, calculation. In the, uh, and then CFD, computer, uh, computation of fluid dynamics, so hospitals which run uh, operation theaters to actually check whether there is too much heat or not, you know, those kind so of things. So basically it helps you to lay out your ducting system, where exactly, so that you make sure there are no hot and cold areas. Right. So, uh, because of 3D, uh, this particular room, if it is 25 people, what is the heat from my our human body plus if we have laptop, how much heat plus lights and then the room volume, then it will calculate how much cooling is required on an optimal level. So, that can be done so that you are not uh, going beyond or lower. Then, then of course, uh, on the manufacturing side again, material optimization. How you can actually run the simulation to optimize the material, and of course going into uh, other simulations that we can. We have multiple simulations, structural simulation, steel free bar simulation. All right. that is <coughs> on the simulation side, you know what we have done is, I think Sunil did cover earlier on artificial intelligence. So you know when you are designing a new part or a product, you know, manually designers can do that, and they are doing it for so many years, but. It limits you know to come up with a shape and form, uh, or either you start from whatever you know already you have. So Autodesk has been a pioneer in this area. So what we are doing is first is we have limited to sustainability, so that you know, if you want to try different materials that we do, and we define the boundary conditions, no shape, only the boundary conditions and the constraints, and then use the computing part to you know come up with the shapes based on the manufacturing. So it may be you know, you can take a different examples in the industry, maybe crankcase or an example. Or you know, for GM we did a, you know, seat belt buckle is there, right? It has got around 8 to 10 components. How we can, you know, create a one component of it, you know, with a particular die casting as a process. And then it gives you a different shape. And from there we can take up and, you know, the designers can take up and make it a little bit more according to give it a form, which is more enable and then that's another area. So when we are doing this, there is a stress, strength analysis, you know, which is all done on the back end. <coughs> and these codes are uh, uh, proven codes, like we have an Aspen code, uh, which is, is used to run the simulation and analysis, etc. Can you highlight it on the team's part? Like there, there will be a three location, correct? Right? Yeah. We are working on the same design on the team. Yes, right. The security is also a concern. Yes, right. Like we are in the NX, what we are doing, the, the NX, then the versioning change, the other more team has doing the same job and the versioning cannot be changed. Yeah. So how this is the same, same. So you have uh, check in, check out. Yes. Yeah, I can, uh, so uh, <coughs> what we do support is replication. Typical replication, when you have microprocessor, you have a master, master site and then you have slave site in the IT terminal. Okay. So we do have solutions which uh, support replication as well as document management. Right? Oh, if you have the version management, hmm. all this is requirement is taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but if 10 people are working on one file, you need a check in, check out okay. So that so becomes the version. Right. So that is yeah. so yeah. one. It goes to it becomes 1.1, 1.1, 1.1. Yeah. Like so, the uh, the, uh, so, so what we call is actually, you cannot just start like that. Okay. Version is okay. What matters to you is the revision, right? So versioning, okay. so, you, so, so you need to set up the revision schemes. Like okay. how will the scheme go after that one? Will it, it will it become one dot one, one dot one dot one, or a start with a a dot one. So we can set the, all that up. And when especially when you're working with multiple sites, multi-site replication plays a key part. Okay? Because and then you set up schedules. So you can say every day evening at this particular time, which will be replicated, so that they don't log into the other server, it has to be on the local server. Yeah. So that is taken care of. 
uh, when, when they excel those files, which are repeated in multiple OK, but it, it seems like small office, they yeah. may not give the complete full replication on that side. Yeah. They need to access remotely. That you have six level of access. So, replication can happen in three ways. One is the whole file replication, or older level replication, right? Or on demand replication. So the incremental, like what Increment, I'm, I'm from car industry, if I auto file. So, we have the uh, complete car. Yeah. We have small part modification going by this. Only thing. those things will be. And that can be incremental only those things. Only yes. the entire. Yes, thing. Yes. only the incremental, otherwise, it's the whole purpose uh, defeat. So and I then saving the first will be working on the same file as the Vera and me, and I have done some other portion, he has done something else. So when it, you save it, there is a uh, way the architecture takes care that uh, one person saves and then my work will get saved so that you get the whole share concept. Share concept, yeah. So though, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't get your name. Parish. 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 So Parish, uh, has been there. What matters is how, how do you manage complexities? See, the burdening is not the entire, again, say, ah. small portion, portion by that is yeah. the. So, incremental uh, burdening is key, I understand yeah. what you're saying, and that is that we need to support them. But otherwise, the checking out the whole thing uh, or updating it takes a uh, lot of bandwidth, yeah. and especially if you're connecting multiple offices. Uh, so when you are saving these drawings, you are saving in native proprietary format or open source format? Uh, by default, it will be native. Okay. Proprietary. And it also converts, creates a universal file format which can be viewable with any viewer. Okay. So with, let's say Dory drawing has got a beta design web format, okay. uh, which can be opened on your mobile devices, on any browser like Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. And now technology, we can just, I can just send a URL to somebody, right? If I don't want an external party to participate, come into the firewall of my system. All I do is send a URL of my design. He gets to see everything, the structure, everything. He gets to play around, his measure, zoom, split, but he cannot modify anything. At the same time, he is able to make a format which is updated real time to me. Okay. Okay. Yes. That, that annotation you can do. Annotation. Right. And I can reply back. So I don't have to create team meetings or Zoom meetings to do this. And also uh, uh, comparing documents. Whether it is a drawing or a Word file or an Excel file or your contract document, you can compare with an older version. So drawing, if I send you a drawing today and later the same drawing after I work after 30 days I send to you, you can compare both and see what change from today to then, right? It will all color in, come in different colors, so you can actually understand what are the changes that happened over the last 10 days or 20 days, so uh, those kind of stuff. It's what uh, Mr. Paul has been awfully quiet, so uh, can you... So what's well, happening you know, One that question I have, so you know, there will be organizations, uh, there will be organizations that have formats, in different, different kinds of formats, right? Of yeah. the uh, drawings and the information. But when you bring it into this platform, then does it somehow magically become interoperable? Then? No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not interoperable as such. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you have a DWG drawing, and uh, if you are, let us say, I want to use the DWG in uh, in a BIM platform, there's Revit. Revit is a product for chat BIM. So Revit can read DWG, but it will not make it intelligent. It just come in as a native. <laughs> 2D drawing, and I can pick those lines and convert that into a 3D element. So, but it will not. Uh, <coughs> similar, I want to add here, actually from the MCAT, uh, the hmm. mechanical engineering side, what we've added is a new technology called any Okay. So, the biggest complaint from all the customers were if I want to use a file created in one system into another system, it has to be via a neutral file format. The neutral file format is not clean. Okay, so there is a lot of losses that come. So how it was built doesn't, it's not what you see. So what we do is we do support native file format. Like for example, in your case, we have index file system, dot PRG file Okay, I can open that directly without translating anything. Not only that, if you make a, a edit in your source file, it I, it's connected, I, it will update. 
So I don't have to take the IGS instead. Have an integration side and data exchange side. I think Autodesk policy has been like that. You know, we haven't encrypted our database or even encrypted our software. Which cannot be opened. You know, there are many products in the market which you pick up and you, know, you cannot open it. So, I'm not naming them, but if you take an alternative solution, you know, both ways, either you may have to open anything, you know, from any CAD solution, we can open that. And there are no additional software which are required for that. That comes as a base capability. And vice versa, if we are sharing our solution with uh, any other uh, solution, you know, we have uh, more or less you know, capability. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, what happens is if you typically look at the entire life cycle, for example, we have two sides of this question. One is once you get a project and you start executing it, so there's a baseline which is already in that. The other side of the story is like if you don't have a baseline, for example, you you have to do some tendering process and all this. You make your specification document, you tell your tender document. And you need to read through it and then based on that you need to design everything and then respond back to the argument. Okay. And then once the baseline is done, the baselining has to be followed during the execution of the project. Okay. Now what happens is if you want to run through the entire life cycle, the you have to be able to conceptualize everything during the process and finally you need to put it across. Okay. So what happens is the entire process is like you get a documentation, you read through it, you extract something, and then again you you design it, and then based on the design you actually start putting it across. Yes. So you do the your estimation, then you do the designing part, and then you put it across. So there are a lot of iterations which normally you guys do during the, uh, you know pre-sales or you know, you know the kind of you know pre activities which we do. And then once the uh, you know finalization is done, then you need to. So what happens is there will be a lot of handshakes which need to be done from a tendering process to design and from design to actually you create a document and then you submit it. Okay. So there are various formats. And even for example, I want to create a knowledge base on this with this document which I have been doing from ages. So I don't need to recreate it once again. So I have maybe around 15, 20 years of data lying with me, then I should be able to read through it and say, based on this intelligence, I should be able to put it faster. Yes. So the point which I'm trying to drive in case if I wanted to create a design out of the value, design versus value and whatever it is. So, so today there are you end up having primavera, you end up having estimation sheets to be in Excel format. You have a design document, you have, you know, multiple things which you actually end up having the entire life cycle. Okay, do you also guys work in terms of saying how do we build the entire ecosystem? The ecosystem could be in terms of quality process, ecosystem could be in terms of bidding process, ecosystem could be in terms of, you know, executing it on ground. So there will be multiple things to be done. So like you talked, you mentioned about BIM, you mentioned about all this. So we need to have an integrated kind of ecosystem. Workflows, you know, aggregations to be reduced. Cycle times has to be reduced. The, you know, first time right kind of resolution should be approached. So for that, whatever you want to do, you can convert the different formats and different layouts which are lying over there into the system and build the ecosystem. Are you really working on this kind of thing? We do. So uh, I can add to that. So I can take. We can have working with companies like Google and and similar lines who are into what is exactly described. So there are two uh, ingredients, two components that is very critical that the data must reside in a data management system and not lying windows to start with it as the revisioning and working. And secondly, when it comes to the iterations part, as far as the engineering side is concerned, we, we, uh, we support the technologies like rules based design. So you create the model once okay, to be reused, and you can create an interface where you just key in the parameters for your next. So when you come, when, when there is a second RFQ coming to you, which is for a similar product line but of a different capacity, so you don't want to start from scratch. Right? So there is where tools like our uh, technologies like iLog, so we space this mind. So whether you are using a 2D design or a 3D design, so you reuse that quickly 
and the screen which can be deployed to the sales people in the organization who are mainly involved in the initial stage, right? Responding to RFQs. So there is an integration that we can set up between the sales teams as well as the engineering team. Okay? So that anything, uh, even if it's a layout of a boiler plant or whatever that is, so we can they can easily tweak the parameters based on the customer input and arrive at a uh, test, test cost estimation so that they are able to respond quickly to RFQs. So, and also gives them a competitive edge. Uh, I'm sure there are other people who are meeting. To answer, to cut a long story short, the answer to your question is yes, because that is the way how customers want solutions, not point solutions. Were there even before you agree? Right? So that's in an integrated solutioning is where we support, and that could be a combination of products plus services. Obviously. Right? There cannot be everything cannot be out of the box. So we have the right partner, okay, the right platform, the right and Forge is a great platform that we have for uh, development. Okay. So it's plug and play the APAs are there, which are partners who are skilled in doing that. Can create these interfaces uh, which so reusable so that the engineering is connected and you are reusing information and not recreating. But I like to push it over what you asked, and you know what we've done at Optodesk now is we are also following a process. We are, we are you know, rather than going and talking about a good solution, we are first trying to understand what we are doing. So, you know, that's an exercise which we do start with a consulting one. And then we figure out and understand the what we are doing. It's not the point which you have to put the process which you are putting See, I mean, at least I'm, I'm more worried about this design to value when I where it, I, it could be the aggregation, it could be about coordination with people, and you know what are the aggregations which could be done. So you know very well what are the variables, it could be event speed, it could be terrain, you know, a lot of things if you wanted to put in some kind of project and even some projects on there. There are parameters on which you make this decision. See what would be the design design. There will be multiple people who need to get involved. For example, if you have to put it faster, you know, you need to have the quality guys, you need to have the design guys, you need to have procurement guys, you need, all these guys have to be a part of the same guys. So the one which I would be, you know, more keen to understand from you is to get it that a design which could be the, the optimized design which, could, which will become the baseline for me to put it to the customer so that I am not over coating or under coating for that. Second is, when I got get the project, I already have the baseline here. It becomes my to execute the project. That's it. So here, the, by the time you respond back, it takes ages because you need to look at a lot of parameters, a lot of people get involved and all. It will, it will not be the first time right now. So, the so uh, Vida, if maybe if we could take this specific discussion offline. Yeah, we, we can, can, we can. I can take it. And so uh, if anybody else has any has, uh, question or observation or something they wanted to ask. Sorry, if you could just connect off like. Yeah. So maybe you want to ask a question? No, no, we, we haven't discussed it. I think it's very helpful. Uh, we would love to hear more. <laughs> just like at least that we are speaking, you know, we'd love to. I mean, I know the yeah. How does it look at Yeah. That's good. The nice breaker is that way. Yeah, yeah. So, Ganesh asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, because we are going into all the questions, you know, there is the need that how in a collaborative approach you know, you can do activities. That's why this I think you have come like with this platform where you can bring in workflows and everything, the native application, whatever. So, so the question I want to ask is. What do you see today as your primary challenge? I think Anish said, you know, we have brownfield, you know, uh, plants and assets and all which we want to get into a digital form. But does anybody else have that kind of a requirement or need or problem which has not yet been solved but could be solved with elements of what is available in the business? So I think, uh, see, one thing I think a lot of people have spoken on 
we have spoken about about so how uh, this solution actually can you know can bring a value add while you know designing a new plant okay yeah. so we from, we come from a manufacturing so yeah. every couple of months we have a new plant coming up so how this can bring up the roi okay and value add in designing that plant? because it's a it's a kind of a legacy way you know uh, building of the plant so how this technology can bring a value so right from site grading up to then commissioning so that's one thing what could be the key kpis which we get into see because at the, at the end of the day is basically your kpis yeah. Yeah. so kpis majorly is one is you know delivering the project on time or before that's the key kpi for us and for our customers second is reduce cost which is also this looks to be you know a management ke paas jana very intangible kind of thing maybe to achieve karna mushkil hai na agar aap aaj ki date mein achieve karna chahoge achieve nahi hoga we usually will be delayed because unless and until you don't deploy these kind of things you will not get that mark of the product and as a reduced cost as a management term sorry baat kar raha hu but reduced cost in what sense agar aapko pehle pata chal jata hai ki foundation mein kaun ka issue aa raha hai Okay. The amount of people traveling back and forth, site can be reduced, okay. and decisions can be taken faster when you have the, when you have when you are seamlessly connected with the architects and consultants who are involved in this project, which is not the case when you do the traditional approach, a bunch of people sketching flat drawings and then communicating, and the consultant coming and explaining. So for you it's very difficult to visualize so now as i say i am asking what is the differentiating factor actually for the traditional so whole thing, the whole thing can be easily done in three dimension so what i am saying the, the traditional process has been 2d right we have a plan elevation section cost and all of that so you make a change in the plan everything get, needs to be updated and if it's not then there is an error in the drawing and that leads to the delay and all those kind of thing now the new process is actually going into a Building information modeling, uh, where you have a central model, which is the digital asset of the real uh, building that you will be building, a real factory that you will be building on site. So you actually do all the simulation digitally, fix all the mistakes before you get down to fix building it. Right, that leads to error-free construction process and understanding everything in the digital world rather than in the real world. It could be very very expensive in the real world. Right. And, uh, and also the communication one process. process. One question. So, what what is the possibility of false positives in this case? So, sorry, I don't want to stress. False positives. It's actually the models that is built. The people who build this. Build because if there is a say three to four percent of false positive, so that that's a big problem. It mm -hmm. is actually say in two D world, it is not thirty forty percent. And you are reducing that to let's say five percent. That itself is a huge improvement, right? And for the three D world, when you actually let's say <coughs> building this, if I make it in three D, you can see that errors much before then it will actually show up uh, in the normal construction process, right? Mr. Kaur, today you know I'm sure you are also doing it, but all the large companies, the largest OEMs out there in India, you know. Builders, four-wheeler SUV, even in the large construction, which are happening, they are using this approach. To what extent is there? But you know, all these things are you know, a very practical thing. For a no project, I think of you know, which is of higher value, you know, hundred crore or fifty crore, is not doing without this. You know, any architecture company you see, or if you go to M and M, Tata Motors, M and M is coming with electric van, Ola is coming with electric van. It is not on the basis of architecture and the two-wheel drive. Yeah, well, the CEO is pushing for a three-dimensional model, and we you know validate that up front. So because they know that if this is done up front, then you know the one-year project. I know it's a very aggressive time called by one of the uh, one of the automotive manufacturers, 
But if you deploy these kind of technologies, they may hit closer to that time. Right. So Tesla's uh, Tesla's Vega plant in Germany is completely on film. And it's been our the same stadium which is a FIFA opening. It was completely built without a single drawing printed. Yeah. And this is the word from the owner developer of that, you know. So I get we could actually send you some information around that, what it takes to do that. In fact, in the Lucille Stadium, all the big deeds which were manufactured in China were actually first scanned in China, send it back to the BIM uh, mod, uh, the basically the architecture team. They actually put it on the uh, scan models in the BIM model to check the tolerance. tolerance. And then, if it is okay, they were asked to ship it. So that you actually erect it with one single, uh, because it's such huge beams, if you can. We have to bring it down two, three times. It's going to be disaster. So, uh, the same thing will happen like you know, the owner of these plants. Right? And there are consultants and contractors and architects helping you. So, it allows you to take an in informed decision rather than having the material arrived at that, then realizing that this yeah. has to be something. In other words, it's like the way you're doing product design. All the RD you're doing up front. You know, nothing is happening in the. Yeah, it's, a, it's the same, same manufacturing world coming into the building space, right? The Bangalore International Airport, actually this uh, project manager Ramio Day wrote to us an email during the pandemic that because they deployed our cloud solution, they didn't lose a single hour during that COVID time, you know. And this project is the only project which will finish before time. You won't believe every week they take a scan and that scan is put on the BIM model. If it fits there, they make the payment. There is no measurement done. How much time is saved because of that? You imagine somebody going and measuring things. It's practically just taken out completely. They bought a scanner for more than <coughs> five, six lakhs, and they did. They're doing this on a weekly basis. But to answer your question, we we have enough to imagine. Yeah, say we, we can have a kind of a no, presentation with our project sure. team. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to, in the interest of time, I just I want yes, to thank you I, all. Yes. And I just want to say, uh, from here on, we would love to actually uh, interact with you further. We can actually schedule an uh, executive briefing for your team, uh, where we can give you a rundown on where we are going as a company, what technologies, how technologies are getting uh, developed. You would see that artificial intelligence coming into the tools that we are, you are using from us. For example, for AutoCAD, when you are doing a drawing, it will automatically give you a pop-up. Let's say you're doing a, a waterproofing. It will give you a pop-up that you had a drawing like this. Do you want to reuse that, for example? Right? So artificial intelligence is going to come to your desktop application very, very soon. Just as I have said it, maybe it will be executive briefing as well. And wait for No, all the tools that we have, you're going to see some of this suggestion. So if I'm making a roof, it will give me a suggestion as to you would want to do you want to do this rather than this in other cases, multiple, right? So executive briefing is for C level. And it will be this tailor made uh, yeah. So then uh, the other is we can actually do a digital transformation workshop for your people. How they we can use our tools in an optimal way. Uh, understand what are the new things. A lot of time, what we have seen is that even AutoCAD for that matter, people use only 20%, 30%. Of the there could be more that you can use than you know automated processes, right? So. That way we can actually go down to that level and of course the third one, we could do a discovery session to understand your process and see how our technology will fit into your process rather than asking you to change for us, right? We don't know. So this is, uh, this is what we do without this we don't uh, even give you a solution. This makes sense. This makes yeah. sense. So, and this is done with different teams because uh, there are different teams which come together to deliver a single product. And all, we have people from the industry. So when you, if you are in manufacturing world, you'll talk to our manufacturing team. If you are in construction, you'll talk to our construction team, architecture, architecture team. And with, I myself am an architect, uh, worked many years in architecture before jumping into the <laughs> software sales. It was very, uh, it was, it happened. In
accident. If I never thought I'll be a software safe guy. <laughs> but I've enjoyed talking to all of you and uh, wait. So thank you. With that, thank you so much.